Psalms 24 verse 1 says this. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. That means Almighty God owns every single thing on this planet, including you. So when you say the Lord, which is Adonai, which means my, my, it's, Jesus is the Savior and Lord, Lord and Savior. He means he owns us. Many people want Jesus as the Savior. I just want to be saved. So when I die, I can go to heaven. But when you, you, you start operating in the Lordship, where he owns you, your mindset changes. Okay. Psalms 50 verse 10. It says, for every beast of the forest is mine. This is almighty God speaking. For every beast in the forest is mine. And the cattle upon the hills is mine. He says, I know the fowls and the mountains and the wild beasts in the field are mine. If I was hungry, I would not tell you, for the, the world is mine and the fullness thereof. What is he saying? He means if he's hungry, he will eat one of his beasts. He'll eat, he'll just take a, a lamb or a bull or whatever and eat it. So if Almighty God is the owner, that means he's the supplier and the giver of all good things. So what you need is you speak to the owner. So we have the privilege of speaking to God and calling him Abba Father, which is Daddy. So not only is he our dad, but he's our Lord. Okay, so the, the Bible says this in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 10. Now it is he that gives us so, uh, seed to the sower and bread to eat. He will also supply you all the seeds you need and will make it grow and produce a rich harvest from your generosity. He will always make you rich enough to be generous at all times so that many will thank Almighty God for the gifts that they receive from you. Who's been in this? I've been in this church from, for 15 years. Who's been here 15 years? Who's, okay. So in that 15 years, who's been less? 10 years, 5 years, you've been here, okay? So whoever saw me speaking about finances in this church? Once or twice? I recall about six times that I've spoken about finance. Why haven't I spoken about finance? Because my hope was, and you need to hear my heart here, I, my hope was that you would catch it from me. Because if you, uh, Brother Lusty spoke about something. He said he walked for 10 years with Elisha. If you're with someone for 10 years, guess what's going to happen? You're going to behave like that person. Okay. Some of you have been here longer than 10 years with me, and I'm wondering, I'm saying, Lord, have these people started to behave like me? You see, there's two things that can happen when you hang with someone. Either you can behave like them, or they can behave like you. So I started thinking, I said, Lord, but perhaps these people don't hang with me during the week when they see what I do. So does anybody here know if I give? You're not sure. I can speak about it, but you're not sure. Does this man practice what he preaches? There's a few people in my life. Uh, one would be Dorothy, my wife, and then my mom, sister, and Megan. They spend quite a lot of time with me. And then above that would be my youth. But they don't see me when I'm in that place of blessing somebody. They don't understand my heart. Some of you will spend the next half an hour with me here on a Sunday morning, and that's the fullness of our relationship. That's the full extent of who you think I am. So you see me in this shirt with these pants. In the week, I don't dress like this. In the week, what I do is not what I do up here. I, I, I operate in a different office, if you want to call it that. So I want to teach you what I believe about money. Somebody challenged me to speak about it, and unfortunately, they're not here this morning. But I said I would speak about it this morning because it's such a contentious issue in the church today. The church want to know, Pastor K, do we give a tenth? 
Do I give a tenth of, of my money? Is it before deductions, after deductions? Do I still have to give a tenth because of the, we finished out of the law? So Jesus died on the cross, the law is broken. Do I still have to give a tenth? So they did a, a survey. Most churches, they say, between eight, 4 and 8% eight tithe. In this congregation, there's about eight people that give into this congregation. If those eight people stopped giving, we shut the church down. Eight people. So I'm not saying I'm going to try and squeeze you to give more because the Bible says this, that before you come here, you must make up in your mind and heart what you're going to give. So I'm not going to try and twist your arm to say, hey, you must give more now. You know, Helman, you started working now. Give more, eh? You're saying yes. Okay. This is my heart. So, let's turn to Matthew 25, verse 14. So, this, if you look in your Bible, some Bibles have got the writing now in red. This is Jesus speaking, okay? Wherever in your Bible you see red writing, that is Jesus speaking. So, somebody asked him, what is the kingdom of God like? And he says, this is what the kingdom of God is like. Let me just, before I forget, I just want to do honor a family here. Because sometimes we forget to honor people. There's Anste, Wesi, and Baranasi. That's a family of a mother with two kids. Wesi's at the back. He does the sound. Baranasi is one of the singers here. And the mother, are you here this morning? Where? Okay, she's here. Their faithfulness to this congregation is astounding. They hear Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. There are others, there's Halma and there's other young, but as a family, they are here constantly. Okay? And I actually fight with Wesley a lot because we do the sound. But I just want to honor your family for, for pressing on in this congregation. That is faithfulness. Okay? That's where faithfulness starts. Where you say, I'm going to do something, and you continue to do it under all circumstances. Because I'm sure there are days where you thought, yes, I've got this thing to do. But they come. They hear constantly, giving of their time and effort. So the, 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 such is the kingdom of God. It says this. For it's just like a man who was about to take a long journey. He called his servants together. And entrusted them with his possessions. This is what Jesus is. Jesus is entrusting you with the kingdom of God. Okay, when, so when he says there is a man, he's speaking about Jesus. Okay, have you got that? He says, and he entrusted them with all his possessions. To one he gave five talents and to another one according to his own ability. And then he went on his journey. So some translations say five, two, and one. What is a talent? A lot of people think that it's, it's something that you've got. So I can play music, that's a talent. In, in this instance, he's speaking about money. He's speaking about gold and a lot of money. It wasn't just a little bit of money. So he gave them that. He says, likewise, to, to the one he, he gave two, okay, and to the other one. So he says this. But the one who had received one went and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. Okay. The one who had five talents went at once and traded with it and made a profit and gave, gained five more. So if I said to you, I'm giving you 5,000 Rand Hellman, when I come back in five years' time, what would you give me back? 50,000. Just make a check out there, please. <laughs> it's a mindset of... Of who owns that money? Whose money was that when he gave it to that man? It was still the landlord's money. So he says this. He made a profit. The next one, after a long time, the, the, the owner returned. So this man comes back after a long time and he says, bring me my profit. Bring me the money that I gave you plus. That's what Almighty God is expecting of us. He expects us to be prosperous. He expects the thing that he gives us to prosper. So some people say to me, but you know, I work very hard for this. He has given you that ability. 
The skill that you have, he has given that to you. He is the one that gives seed to the sower. The intelligence that you have is God-given. Not everybody has got the skill to do what you do. There's some people that are sweepers. Let me tell you what. You think you could, who thinks I could be a sweeper? Everybody could do that. I couldn't do that. Day after day, eight hours a day, sometimes more, I see these ladies in the hospital sweeping and cleaning, and people just discard them. Do you know what a hard job that is? That's not an easy job. They are blessed with that ability to do that. So don't ever think you walk by somebody that's cleaning the street. You think, oh, shh, do that for a month. I want to tell the youngsters here something. When I was 17 years old, do you know what job I did for six months? I was a dustbin boy. I loaded dustbins. Our area went under strike. There were no dustbin boys. I volunteered with me and three of my other friends. I used to be a dustbin boy. So some of my friends laughed at me. But you know what? I got fit and I learned something. I learned I don't want to be a dustbin boy. Okay. It's a tough job. We disrespect those people. But it's what God has given them to do. So I'm, I'm going to ask you... What are you doing with God, what God has given you to do? So we go on. It says, and the one who received five talents came and brought him five more, saying, Master, you entrusted me with five talents, and see, I've made a profit gained from these talents, and I give you five more. How amazing is that? That's powerful. His master said to him, now I want to ask you something. Many times I've heard people say, when I get to heaven, I want Almighty God to say this to me. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Who's ever heard that? Many times. Here's the thing. It says this. The master said to him, well done, thy good and faithful servant. You have been faithful and trustworthy over a little. I will put you in charge of many things in, and you will share in your joy with your master. He's not speaking about your Christian life. He was speaking about the things that he's given to you. You see, many people say, I want to be a good steward of what God's given me. Who's ever heard, I want to be a good steward? So what they do is they say, Father, give me lots of money and lots of things, and I will be a good steward. I will look after those things for you. Listen what goes on. Also, the man that had two talents came forward, saying, Master, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I made two more and gained profit. Here it is. And again, he says, his master said to him, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful and trusty over a little. I will put you in charge of many things. Share in the joy of your master. The little that you have now, you see, so many people say to me, one day when Almighty God blesses me with a lot, I'm going to look after it, and I'm going to bless this church, Pastor Kenneth. If you can't do it now, if you can't say to me, listen, I see your need, here we go. You won't do it when you've got a lot. And the one that had received one talent also came forth, and he knew the master had to be harsh, demanding the repaying. It says, where did you sow and gather? Why did, you, why did you not scatter the seed? So I was afraid. And he went and hid the talent. So some of us, Almighty God is blessing with things and we're hanging on to it. We say, well, yes, you know what, I've got to look after my old age. Uh, if I, you know what, I've got to look after this thing. I've got, to, I've got to check this thing. And in all that time, the Lord is saying, bless my people. Use that, bless the people. And you say, no, no, but what happens when I get older? What happens tomorrow? Listen, if he is the seed, he gives you the seed. What is tomorrow to him? So he says, but his master answered, you wicked, lazy servant. You knew that I reap the harvest. Where did you not rather go and scatter that seed? So he said, go and sow it into the ground. Then you ought to have put money with the bankers, and at least I would have had returned and my money back with interest. So take that talent away from him and give it to the one that has ten talents. 
I don't ever want to be that person. So when he says, thy good and faithful servant, he's speaking about things. And these are the things that I've avoided speaking of from this pulpit. Because first of all, I didn't want to offend people. Second of all, there are some poor people here. And I thought, shame, you don't want to say that to poor people. But I'm doing you an injustice. Almighty God has given every single one of you something to do with your hands. Do it well. The Bible says whatever he has given you to do, whatever you go and do, do it as if you're doing it as unto the Lord. If you're a street sweeper, do that street sweeping as if it's unto Jesus. If you're a domestic worker, do you know the privilege of me having a domestic worker? It's an absolute privilege for me to have a domestic worker that comes and cleans in my house. I just want to tell you, my domestic worker that works for me has been working for Auntie Dot for 36 years. And she's blessed, let me tell you. So when you start to look at your life, I was watching something on TV about America. Listen, we live like kings here. People want to move to America. Are you out of your mind? There's somebody there. She's a lady. She earns 28,000 rand a month. She cannot find an apartment to live for 28,000 rand a month. She lives in her car. So if you don't have a husband and a wife working together, you cannot afford a place to stay. That's how difficult it is. In South Africa, we are living like kings. And yet I say that, but we've got some people, even in this congregation, that are battling. So it is our responsibility towards our brothers and sisters to say, you know what, I'm going to help feed this man. I'm going to feed this woman. Where am I going with this? I want to stand in front of Almighty God one day and he's going to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant, because I gave you money. I gave you things, because this is what it's about. We can try and look at it and say, no, it's talents. It's, he gave them money, and they used it wisely. And he calls them my faithful servant. So let me ask you this. How can you ask Almighty God to bless you with things and wealth and money if you can't even steward your own heart properly? So many of us are saying, Lord, give me money. I want millions. I want dollars. He says, but look at your heart's condition. If you're going to treat my things like you treat your heart, how can I bless you? I'm going to say it again, so you need to get this. If you're saying, Lord, where is my blessing? Why am I not getting what my neighbor's got? How can you bless that man but not bless me? He's asking, what have you done with your heart? You allow rubbish in your heart and body, yet you want me to bless you more. It's like an addict saying, Lord, bless me with big money. He'll say, I'll bless you with big money, you will die because you will overdose. But we pick on addicts. But there's other things in life. He's saying, what are you allowing in your eyes and ears that I give you blessings and you allow that stuff to come and corrupt your heart? Lord, I need the, the latest iPhone so you can watch porn. What do you want to do with it? Yeah, the youth laugh because they know it's true. What do you want to do with it? Married woman, married men, go on a dating site. Check out God blessed me with this iPhone. So you can see the woman if she's wrinkled. What is it that you want to do with that? When you're saying, Lord, bless me, why? Why do you want blessings? So I can live more comfortably? Trust me, I, want, I live very comfortably. I drive a nice car. But when I can bless, I bless. And I don't look at the 10%. Do you know what the Bible says about the 10%? It doesn't say, say give 10% to the kingdom of God. It says bring it. It's the Lord's. Now we go back and I, I don't believe in tithing 10%. I don't believe it. Okay. And let me tell you something else. The Bible is very clear that the 10% was never 10% if you give money. It's 30%. Go and study it in Deuteronomy. It says, if you bring fruit and veg and grain to the storehouse, it's 10%. If you exchange it for money, it's 30%. So if you think oh, I'm doing, you know, God, <laughs> I'm giving 10%, you must check me, eh? 
He's going, well, go and check the scripture. You're actually 20% short. So people say, are you telling me I don't have to give? I'm telling you, you must not give under compulsion. If you are in a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, 10% will be nothing according to what you give. When he says, give everything, go look at the story in the book of Acts where Ananias sold their property and was supposed to give everything to God. They gave 100%. And because they lied to Almighty God, they were struck down, him and his wife. When Almighty God says to you, my son, Halman, take what you have in your pocket and give, it's not yours. What does the Bible say, what we just read there in Psalms 50? Psalms 24? The fullness of the earth, everything that is within it, belongs to Jesus, belongs to God, because he is the one that made it, and he is the one that gave it. You belong to him. So you know what terrifies me? Every time I preach a message, during that week, trust me, what I preached, I'm going to be challenged on. So Dot, get ready. She's like, oh, not again. When God says to you, feed that woman, doesn't mean feed her for one day. It doesn't mean stopping at the robot and saying, let, you, let me bless this out here. My change. If Almighty God says to you, bless that person, take what you have on you and bless that person. Can you imagine I preach this every Sunday for the next year? Do you know that there are churches that do that? And you know what happens in those churches? They prosper. They prosper. I get freaked out. Because I'm saying, I said to the Lord 15 years ago, I said, Lord, please don't let this church or this ministry work around finance because I don't want to go down that road. I don't want to be like these other pastors that have to every Sunday milk and milk the sheep. He said, Go forth and feed my sheep. I don't want to have to milk you. I don't want to have to every Sunday say you have to give. We have to pave the parking lot. Give. I want you to have my heart. I want you to have my heart. And my heart says 10% ain't enough. Because what I have is given from him. The fullness of the earth is his. You are a steward. You are just looking after the stuff for him. Let me ask you a question. Helman, when you die, what happens to your car? Your mother's children will fight. And if they die, you own nothing. You think I own the house, I own the car, my diamond ring that my husband gave me, which is a piece of glass maybe, just saying, whatever you think you own, Whatever you think you're leaving to your kids, at some point becomes somebody else's. You own nothing. The only thing you leave that has got any value is your legacy. The only thing you're ever going to leave that has got a value is how you treated other people, how you fed other people, how you made that person feel. I'm going to take a few things with me to heaven. My spirit and people. That's it. I'm going to take people. There's some young men that are new here in this congregation. They're visiting. There's some new ladies, some new visitors. Today you might decide, you know what? I think I need to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Guess what? When I get to heaven, that's the thing I can take with. So when Almighty God says to you, Dorothy, give that thing to that person. You start second guessing. Listen, you're not giving your stuff away. You are giving what was already belonging to God. You can say, but you know how hard I worked for that. Yes, I, Almighty God gave you that gift to work. Difficult one, eh? When he says give, give. When he, my wife freaks out because she's got a different personality. My wife worries about tomorrow and when we're older. It's a lady thing. A woman does that. Okay. So she makes sure I don't have a lot of money in my pocket when I leave the house. Because she knows whatever is there doesn't come back. Guess what? I can never, you can never ever out 
give God. And the thing is this, when you limit what you're giving, you are saying, my God can't supply my needs. That's what you're saying. you got a few million in the bank. You say, I must look after that little nest egg. He says, it's mine. You could die today. And then what? So I want to challenge you. I want to ask you this question. What happens if Almighty God said to you today, give what you have to someone? Dot and I know a pastor couple. They've got two kids. They've just had another little baby, eh, Dot? They were sitting in a restaurant. And the Lord said, give your house. You just paid it off. Give it to the waiter. They said, can you come see us tomorrow? They moved back to their mother's house. They have given that house 1.6 million rand to that waiter. Can you do that? So listen up. It's a heart condition. Who is in your heart? You know what? Once you start to look after your heart and you start to realize how valuable it is and that the stuff you're allowing in these things here and in here and you start looking after your body because the Bible says that your body is the house of the Holy Spirit and your eyes are the... That's what happens. You, that's where your life is. The Holy Spirit gives you life. Guess what will happen? You start to realize why you're on the planet. And let me tell you what. Yeah, he says you share in all things with, with who? With the man that, that went on holiday. He says, I'm going away, I'm coming back. When he came back, he says you will share in all good things in joy. You cannot outgive God. Let me tell you the best time to give to God. The best, best, best time is when you're struggling, when you're battling, when you've got nothing. Do you know why I say that? If you've got a million rand and you, got, you give a hundred thousand, it means nothing. But when you've got five rand and you give away five rand, that's more than that man ever could have given. That's what the story of the two talents is about. Where she gave everything she had. She put it in there. She said, that's it. You know how blessed that woman was. Let me tell you what. The day you stop hanging on to your little nest egg. The day you stop hanging on to say, what happens tomorrow? When you stop saying, you know what? I don't, you know what? God's going to take care of me. That's the day you find freedom. That's the day where you do what Almighty God said, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. Look after the orphans and the widows. How do you look after an orphan and a widow? You house them, you clothe them, you feed them. I'm going to stop here. I'll carry on next week with the rest of that story. I want to challenge you about something. I want to ask you this morning, is Jesus your Lord? If he is your Lord, that means he takes care of you under all circumstances. One day I need my mom to come and testify up here where we come from. I don't know if she'll be embarrassed. But I remember my mother giving. I remember a family moving into a house when we had nothing. They put their beds in the, in the lounge. We had nothing. Come and live with us. We can share what we have. I remember people living there that had nothing. Now come, come stay. Guess what? I'm blessed because of what my mother done. Okay. And I see it in my family. I see it in my sister. I see it in me. My mother taught me the greatest thing. You help people. Period. If they don't have... You help them. You feed them. So I'm going to challenge you. This year, I believe the Lord wants to take us to another place where this church does the gospel. So when we get, we give. A lot of churches, they say when you give, you get and you become wealthy. I'm saying you give, you get, and you give more. Can you close your eyes for a moment? 
Father, I don't want to be a church that gives 10% and we feel, oh, now we're protected. And I've done my duty, my godly duty. I don't want to do that. I want to be the church that when Almighty God says, hey, there's a need here. Help these people. That the people in this congregation stand up and say, Pastor Kenneth, all I've got today is 10 rand. Please give it to that person. We're so worried that if I give, I'm not going to have. Well, your word says, when I give, I shall receive. And that is what stewardship is about. When you give me something, I look after it, but I share of the proceeds of that thing. When, I, when I, I've got a house and I've got spare rooms, what do I do with those rooms? I get a bonus. What do I do with that bonus? I give, I share, I love. And my God says, you gave, you shared, you loved. Let me give you some love. Let me share some more of what I've got. Because I own everything, including you and your heart. So Father, please, I ask your Holy Spirit this morning to touch hearts in this place. Change the way we're thinking about what we have and are. Change us, Lord, to let us see that you've placed us in this place for a specific purpose. Not just to give time, energy, but to give of our sustenance. There are two women in the Bible the Bible says that Jesus needed and two women came and gave of their sustenance to Jesus. Let us be like that woman. Let us be and say, you know what, Lord? You need, your people need. We are your hands and feet. We are your mouth. We are the ones that embrace. Let us not just be speakers of the word, but doers. Let us get up and say, you know what? I'm going to help my neighbor. I see her battling. I'm going to give her something of what I have. As we give. People see Jesus in us. Some people are saying, Lord, I'm hungry. And you walk right past them. You could be Jesus to that person every single day. There was a testimony last week of a young man that came here. He was sitting in the congregation and Dorothy went to him and said, are you okay? On the third time, he confessed he's a drug addict. God gave him a meal. And three years later, he comes back here to say, you know what? That meal, you prayed for me and you gave me something to eat was the last night I touched drugs in three years. From a meal, from a loaf of bread. So I want to challenge you this morning. And it's not for me. I'm not going to say, listen guys, please give me what I need. I don't need. What I do need is for you to be obedient to Almighty God. So Father, the greatest giver of anything was you when you gave your son. You gave us life. You gave us salvation. You gave. You never withhold anything. You gave your life, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, I ask you to touch lives here this morning to make them understand that when Almighty God comes and dwells within you, when he sends his spirit, there has to be a change and we have to start behaving like Jesus. And sometimes, Lord, we reject. I know because I've done it before. Well, Almighty God says, go and do this. And I I don't. So this morning, the word I'm giving you, if you're saying, Lord, I need to hear from you, I'm telling you, do what I spoke about this morning. You will be super blessed because you are blessed to be a blessing. So Father, I break those doctrines of man that come with a thing that God has to give back because we're giving a tithe. It was created by man. What I'm saying, my Bible says, God loves a cheerful giver. And he is the one that supplies us. And as he supplies us, we give. And we give in abundance. Far above the law. We are not part of the law anymore. We are greater than the law. So Father, we sorry for limiting you. And I'm, I'm sure there are many here that... They felt sure, I don't know if I should give. And and they might be sitting saying, sure, I had opportunities to do that. And they never forgive them, Lord. But from today, Lord, they don't have an excuse. They know the truth. The Bible says the truth will set you free. So, Father, whatever we have is yours. Whatever skill I have is yours. Whatever job I have is yours. So I bless this congregation this morning. 
We give you praise and honor, Lord. Let us be doers of the word. Let us be good stewards of our heart. Let us look after our heart. And once that is there, the Lord will say, I am blessing you with more as you look after your heart and your body. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen.